John Gill's Exposition of the Bible Text But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Genesis 19.26 Commentary But his wife looked back from behind him. That is, the wife of Lot, whose name the Jewish writers say was Adith, or as others Irith, and, according to the Targums of Jonathan and Jerusalem, she was a native of Sodom now, as they were going from Sodom to Zor, she was behind Lot, his back was to her, so that he could not see her, this was a temptation to her to look back, since her husband could not see her, and this she did, either, as the above paraphrases suggest, that she might see what would be the end of her father's house and family, or whether her married daughters, if she had any, were following her, after whom her bowels yearned, or being grieved for the goods and substance left behind, and for the people of Sodom in general, for whom she had too much concern, however, be it on what account it may, she was severely punished for it. And she became a pillar of salt. Was struck dead at once, either by the immediate hand of God, or by the shower of fire and brimstone, and her body was at once changed into a metallic substance, a kind of salt, hard and durable, such as Pliny speaks of, cut out of rocks, with which houses were built, and hardened with the sun, and could scarcely be cut with an iron instrument, so that she did not fall to the ground, but stood up erect as a pillar, retaining very probably the human form, Josephus says, this pillar continued to his times, and that he saw it, Irenaus and Tertullian speak of it as in their times, a thing incredible, and Benjamin of Tudela says, it stood in his times two parses from the sea of Sodom, and though the flocks were continually licking it, yet it grew again to its former size. Raoulfer relates something of the same kind by information, but not on his own testimony, that the pilgrims who visited used to beat off some small pieces, and yet was found whole again, nay, which is beyond all credit, that they once knocked off a whole hand and took it away, and when they returned found it whole again and one that traveled in those parts in the beginning of the 16th century affirms, that almost in the midway to Zor is seen to this day the pillar of salt into which Lot's wife was turned, he does not say indeed that he saw it, but leaves his reader to think so, and the Jerusalem Targum says, it will remain until the resurrection, but modern travelers of credit and intelligence could never see it, and when they have inquired of the country people about it, they either tell them there is no such thing, or say it stands in the mountains, where it cannot be come at, because of the Arabs, or because of wild beasts but no doubt there was such a statue, but how long it continued cannot be said, nor should it be thought incredible, when there are similar facts affirmed by authors of the best credit and reputation Avant Inu's reports, that in Bavaria, in 1348, more than 50 peasants, with the cows they had milked, at the time of an earthquake were struck with a pestilential air, and stiffened into statues of salt, and which he himself saw, and the Chancellor of Austria and Basilius relates, that Didacus Almagras, who was the first person that with his army penetrated through the cold countries from Peru into Chile, lost abundance of his men, through the extremity of the cold and a pestiferous air, and that, returning to the same place five months afterwards, he found his men, horse, and foot, standing unmoved, unconsumed, in the same situation, form, and habit, the pestilence had fastened them, one lying on the ground, another standing upright, another holding his bridle in his hand, as if about to shake it, in short, he found them just. As he left them, without any ill smell or color, common to corpses indeed, the very fables of the heathens, which seem to be hammered out of this history, serve to confirm the truth of the whole of it as the fable of Jupiter and Mercury coming to a certain place in Phrygia, where they were hospitably entertained by Bossus and Philemon, when the doors were shut against them by others, wherefore they directed their guests, after being entertained by them, to leave the place and follow them to the mountains, when they turned the town into a standing lake and also that of Niobe being changed into a marble stone while weeping for the death of her children and of Olenus and Lethea, turned into stones also. But, leaving these, and passing by other instances that might be observed, 
we are directed to remember this wonderful case by our Lord Himself, Luke 17:32, and it should be an instruction to us not to look back nor turn back from the profession of the true religion we have made, but to follow Christ, and abide by His truths and ordinances.